Hi, my name is Olu Fisayo Odebode, but you can call me Fisayo and I'll be sharing on the subject of worship with focus on worshiping with access, worshiping with access. So growing up in church as a worshiper and eventually as a worship leader, um, I was made to believe that the essence of worship is uh, to bring down the presence of God. The essence of worship is to set the atmosphere. The essence of worship is to uh, prepare the hearts of people for a message. Uh, but in recent times, I've struggled so much with these ideologies and eventually understood better the subject of worship. Now, I think I may just be able to offer you better perspectives as to why we worship and uh, how to worship. So in this very few minutes of video, uh, I will share with you how to worship God with access because I believe there is a need for the supernatural. And um, it starts from knowing, it starts from knowing that, uh, it starts from knowing how to worship God. It starts from being aware that God is present and everywhere. And even understanding the essence of worship in itself and why we do it. So just uh, ride with me. <laughs> yeah, in the Old Testament, God created man, you know, in his own image. In the beginning, God created man in his own image. After his likeness, he created man and put him in the Garden of Eden, you know, put him in charge of everything, asked him to subdue, to take charge, to reproduce, and all of that. However, man fell into sin and then several years later there were just these rules and regulations that were created for god's people to be able to worship and you know operate within his temple his temple that was created by you know his people for the purpose of worship for the purpose of service now these rules and regulations were given for god's people to be able to somehow submit themselves to be able to somehow humble themselves to be able to somehow uh yield themselves and eventually kind of uh interacts with god but you see the interaction didn't really or directly happen because everything became you know kind of ritualistic and um a priest was needed to be able to go deep into the holies and access god for uh god's people shaka the hebrew word for worship and how people worship then which uh, basically means putting your face to the ground meaning uh, i'm putting my head below my heart i'm returning to the place where i was created for purpose i am yielding this is cool however very ritualistic like i mentioned earlier on and there was no you know real experience of god there was no dialogue no intimacy no relationship you know, intimate relationship with God. And what God wants with us is a relationship, intimate one. He wants us to respond to him lovingly. You know, he doesn't want us to see him as uh, that very strong man who is egoistic or who is full of ego and just wants to pounce on us with every opportunity that he gets or at every sight of us messing up, wanting to just pounce on us. So you see, God created us to be creative. He is looking for people to go on a journey with him so this is what i'll say worship is not bringing down the presence of god worship is beyond setting the atmosphere worship is beyond uh 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 worship is beyond preparing the hearts of people for a message it is actually a reinforcement of access you know to the father worship is everything that's why when we gather together to have a structured meeting it's called a worship service because worship is everything worship is the reason jesus came jesus who is fully god and totally human you know came just to restore that connection that was supposed to be in the beginning and even to restore it in a better way because man has now been through some kind of journey with god and now have ha, man now has deeper understanding of grace so jesus came to restore this connection as a matter of fact when jesus did the greatest work of sacrifice on the cross you know the veil in the temple that veil you know of demarcation was torn from top to bottom it was ripped off you know the implication of that is that we now have full access to god based on the finished work of christ as you may or may not already know <laughs> you know the high priest usually go on behalf of God's people uh, 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 to access God, to appease God. And he, he, 
to do this, there would have been a lot of sacrifice done outside. He has to cleanse his hand. He has to wash up. He has to, you know, clean himself physically. And he has to be without blame or sin. Because if he is with blame or sin and he walks into there, there is a high likelihood, in fact, not a high likelihood. He will be dragged out dead because he would have been struck dead. So he has to go in without sin, without blame. He has, to he has to be of top character. He has to be the high priest that he calls himself or that he's being called. So, and he has to do this on behalf of, you know, he has to go to God on behalf of his fellow human beings, human beings like him, you know, but the thing is that Jesus, the head bruiser himself, he, who is also called Emmanuel, God with us, he, he finished the work at the cross. He knocked out the enemy completely and he declared an end to this hardship of worship. To this hardship of worship, he declared a total end. The Bible says that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives inside of me. Christ lives inside of you. If you are a child of God, you are a carrier of Jesus inside of you. The same Jesus who is seated by the Lord is the one who lives inside of you. So therefore, you have unlimited access to the Lord. I have unlimited access to the Lord. We don't need a priest. We don't need a high priest. We don't need a worship leader in order to be able to get access, in order to be able to gain access to God. We don't. Because we already have God living inside of us. We are already a carrier of his presence. So we don't need anyone to bring down his presence for us. Neither do we need anyone to take us into his presence. But So this is the question I have. What if when we worship, what we do is that uh, we make ourselves more aware of his presence. Remembering what he has done. Remembering what he has done in our lives or in time past, declaring, prophesying, bringing to light, revealing what he is doing in our midst, declaring right here and now that he is transforming us even in this place of worship. And that's basically what a worship leader does with the help of the Holy Spirit. Makes us aware of God's presence, you know, reminds us of what he has done. And um, everyone can also do this together, even with a worship leader. So, um, we are transformed uh, by being in God's presence. Even the disciples testified of Jesus Christ uh, when he deliberate, deliberately took out time to be with the Lord. That you see, his face shined like a sun. He changed, his appearance changed completely. He said his garments were shining like light, shining like light. So this is what I'll say. Being aware of God and what he is doing. Stairs up rejoicing, praising, celebration, uh, uh, reverence, honor, submission, and much more from our inside another question that um i like to ask um is that what if the lord's prayer as we know it uh is about the principles and practices that jesus christ is encouraging us to live by after all the bible says that we should pray without ceasing that means that prayer is a lifestyle that means that worship being a form of prayer is a lifestyle what we do daily it is how we live our father establishing that we can commune with God from a place of relationship and not out of fear of a sanction. Father to child, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. That's willingly submitting to his leadership and counsel. Deliberately submitting because what you see, even though he is Father God, he still allows for us to make our own decisions. He still allows for us to make our choices. He still allows for us to decide, you know, what we want. So we can deliberately allow for his kingdom on earth, allow him to invade our space. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the principle of love and acceptance right there. God loves us unconditionally and graciously writes off our wrongs. Hallelujah. Guess what? That's what he expects for us to do. He expects for us to do the same. To uh, love unconditionally. To graciously write of other people's wrong. Uh, Peter asked Jesus, how often should we forgive? And his response was 70 times, 7 times. 
the implication is that as many times as we need to because we have to be gracious to others not looking out for their wrongs not looking out for the wrong in their actions whether in the family system or units or whether in the church whether with our leaders whether in a society whether at work or anywhere you know we have to be gracious to people so in order for us to experience the supernatural in worship we have to understand that how god wants us to worship god is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him that's what the bible says in spirit and in truth so he wants us to worship him with access not as slaves unto a slave master you get what i mean we have to be aware that we are spirit beings and god is a spirit as well so he lives inside of us we have to worship him in truth and reality of who we are in him you know he wants that rapport spirit to spirit father to child friend to friend he wants to Take us on a casual walk on a cool evening. Come on. David, who was called a man after God's heart, understood this in Psalm 23. He said, he leads me beside the still waters. He leads me beside the still waters. Come on. That's a walk right there. A walk with God where he gets to show you great and mighty things. Where he gets to lead you. He gets to guide you. He gets to... um. He gets to uh, disciple you and so much more. So it is my prayer right now that, um, that we will become more aware of the access that we have to God and the grace that he has given us to dwell in his presence forever and ever without blame, without shame, without guilt, without fear, that the spirit of understanding will rest upon us and we will recognize fully that we are free to worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.